for today's webinar titled Mediterranean Diet, Traditions, Innovations and Lifestyle for a Sustainable Future that is organized in collaboration with the Future Food Institute and the Municipality of Pollica. Firstly, I would like to thank President Roversi and the Mayor of Pollica, Stefano Pisani, for organizing and participating to this very interesting initiative. My warmest regards go also to Professor Junko Kimura of Hosei University for being with us today. Kimura-san is not only a great friend of Italy, but also a very knowledgeable expert of Italian food and wine culture. Today webinar and reach even further the program of uh, more than 30 activities and event uh, we organize from November 23rd to November 29th to celebrate in spite of the pandemic the fifth uh, edition of the Italian Cuisine Week uh, in Japan. This annual event conceived by the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and aimed at promoting the extraordinary uh, Italian culinary tradition and agro-food products worldwide has proven to be, through the years, increasingly su successful here in Japan. Indeed, the Japanese public has always been traditionally very receptive and interested in our food and wine products, uh, as testified by the extraordinary performance of the Italian exports to Japan in the agro-food sector, which in the year 2019, with the entry into force of the U European Union-Japan Economic Partner uh, Agreement, EPA, grew by 11.8%, reaching almost 1 billion euros in value. So Italy is one of the EU countries that has benefited the most from this landmark agreement, which recognizes and protects 45 Italian products through the geographical indications uh, uh, mark system. This results uh, urge, urge us, especially at this complex juncture, to continue to devise, together with our companies and other private and public stakeholders, bold strategies to further enha enhance the presence of food and wine products on this market and to promote the rich Italian culinary culture in Japan. Today's webinar goes exactly in this direction. And that is why I am particularly thankful to President Roversi Mayor Pisani and Professor Kimura for leading today's discussion. By disseminating a deeper knowledge about the Mediterranean diet, one of the pillars of our intangible cultural heritage, and the importance of the quality of the ingredients comprising it, this webinar will contribute to foster Japanese consumer appreciation for Italian products. Furthermore, the webinar could not have been more timely. Indeed, last uh, November 16, we celebrated the 10th anniversary of the inclusion of the Mediterranean diet in the list of intangible cultural heritage of UNESCO, which acknowledged the city of Pollica in southern Italy as one of its most emblematic sites. Here, the American, here in Pollica, the American scholar Ansel Keys in 1950s uh, theorized the beneficial quality of healthy Italian diet and lifestyle, which uh, at the same time ensures the safeguard of biodiversity and the sustainable use of natural resources. Before getting to the heart of the debate, in leaving the floor to the discussions, I would like to thank again the Future Food Institute, the Municipality of Pollica, and Professor Kimura for participating to this very, very interesting event. 
Thank you very much for your attention. So thank you so much, Ambassador Starace. As you know, we are always very, very happy to join our community in Japan. The Future Food Institute is proudly also in Japan, in Kiyobashi Living Lab. And we are very glad today to celebrate together with our, say, our community in Japan, something that we really care about. So celebrating the Italian excellences and also spreading around the world the Mediterranean heritage. So I'm very glad today to share with you some of the insights, some of the stories, some of the values that we have been always seeing represented in something that is part of our heritage, but that now we know is also an heritage of the humanity. Today, as Ambassador Starace said, we have two very important people with us that can actually help us to better understand which are the values of the Mediterranean diet. So first of all, I would love to invite the mayor of Politica, Stefano Pisani, here on stage with me, because I would love him to share with us which is the essence of Polika and what is actually his experience living in a place that has more than 2,000 years of history. So Stefano, I leave the floor to you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Sara. Thank you uh, to organize the, the webinar. Uh, thank you to the ambassador. Uh, for Poliga is uh, very important uh, to uh, to ask uh, to to tell about the Mediterranean diet around the world because uh, for Poliga is very simple um, talk about uh, talk about Mediterranean diet because for us uh, is uh, the normal life the normal way to do the thing uh, we produce. Uh, uh, we produce food, produce uh, normal, uh, uh, in the normal way, we produce the biological food. We have uh, a, a big, uh, um, uh, many, many, uh, many, many elements of biodiversity. Um, and uh, probably the, the other most important thing is the, the culture and the tradition, uh, very straight, um, very, uh, very, very, um, sorry, uh, very close to, very, very close to the culture of the Mediterranean diet. Uh, for example, when you, when we, when he, when he eat food, uh, we don't eat only the food. We stayed, we stay together and uh, ever, uh, we, and we create uh, a specific, uh, uh, a, spe a, specific, a specific relation with other people and produce the new culture. We discuss, we produce uh, uh, many relation uh, about, uh, about uh, between people. And, um, and this is only an element, but um, the most important thing for the Mediterranean diet is the, uh, the different evolution by uh, 2,500 uh, years old to today, uh, we we have uh, uh, we put uh, sorry sorry for my English. Uh, I have some problem uh, um, for, for for English uh, with English, but uh, I try to uh, to explain the best way uh, the value of polyga. Um, Mediterranean diet in the 2010 uh, was recognized as a cultural heritage uh, for humanity by UNESCO. Why? Not only for the uh, not only for the food, not only for the diet, but it's very important because uh, was recognized as a life, lifestyle, a way uh, a way of living, uh, a way to live, and um, and the people uh, discover. That uh, the normal life was uh, was defined uh, a cultural in a, a material cultural heritage, because uh, the UNESCO recognized 
the the culture the um, the specific uh, um, uh, the, the specific uh, uh, value of the um, of the of the culture um, uh, I, i'm i'm so sorry uh, for for english but uh, uh, probably the best way to discover to discover the mediterranean diet is to uh, discover polliga and cilento a national park in the south of italy where uh, where we have uh, 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 30, 33 percent of the Italian biodiversity. Uh, this is the other value of the Mediterranean diet, the environment. If you want to preserve the Mediterranean diet lifestyle, you need to preserve the the, envi the environment. And if you uh, want to uh, to find a right model for the future of the of the planet, Probably you must try to uh, to apply the Mediterranean diet lifestyle to all around the world. Uh, when uh, when I talk about model, I don't uh, I don't talk about only uh, product and other. Um, we try to use the product uh, that uh, produced in the single place, but you use the philosophy of Mediterranean diet. Um, you need to uh, you need to analyze uh, the the journey. You need to analyze the uh, your life slowly, very slowly. Uh, so you uh, so you discover many many things that in the other way you can uh, you can uh, you can't know. Uh, thank you, Sarah, to organize the the meeting and. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure for me to participate uh, in the in this web in this webinar. Thank you so much. Anyway, it's always a great pleasure to have you with us. Also, because we have been experiencing really what is the, the Mediterranean diet, being in Polica, talking with the people, uh, being hosted, and understanding which is the value of sharing food, the commensality, and one of the ingredients actually that is a way of living, a way of producing, a way of keeping everything in balance with nature. So before we jump into the discussion with Professor Kimura, I really would love to share with the audience some little insight pictures uh, and talk a little bit about the journey that Major Pisani was representing during his speech. So when we had the chance uh, really to be in Polica and see and live with, uh, with our real experiences, uh, what is about uh, um, the, the Mediterranean diet, uh, we actually had the chance uh, to get exposed to the origin, the history. And as Major Pisani was saying, the philosophy behind this this incredible uh, treasure, let's say. Of course, as we know, UNESCO has been nominating the Mediterranean diet as a global heritage. But not just because of uh, the food is good, uh, not just because of the incredible produce that you can find over there, but because it's a set of values, rituals, songs, cultures, and many, many, many elements that we have been collecting for more than 2,500 years. Last summer, as Future Food Institute, we had the chance to work very closely with the community of Pollica and Cilento, and together with FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, hosting in Pollica, an amazing boot camp to train climate shapers, youth that want to tackle the major challenges we are facing as a humanity, starting from food. And we decided to start from, uh, let's say, what we consider the origin of uh, our culture related to food, starting from there and starting exploring what the history have been teaching us. What we found in Polica actually was the ruin of a very ancient heritage, where the first Greek philosophers, Zeno and Parmenide, were already talking about the incredible balance we need to find 
putting the life of humans in harmony with nature. And of course, if you have the chance to explore and deep dive and read all the lectures of those philosophers, you can find a lot of connection with what we see now represented also by the Agenda 2030 of the United Nations, the Sustainable Development Goals. And this is pretty amazing because, of course, you can connect it easily with what we need now. But also, if you go on some centuries, you can also know that those philosophers were not just talking about uh, ephemeral things. They were not just talking about thoughts, but they were also taking care about something more. So feeding mind, feeding soul, but also healthily feeding uh, the body. And this is the reason why in the same area, after some centuries, came to life the first Western medical school the first school that we can recognize, uh, the first medical school of the Western world, La Scuola Salernitana. And of course, we are starting to connect the dots. A lot of awareness about the balance with the environment, but also a lot of knowledge related to science and the health of humans. But only after the World War, after Margaret and Ansel Keys decided to move to this area, studying how people living in the Mediterranean basin are actually benefiting so much because they found out that these people were living longer, were not affected by many different diseases related to the cardiovascular issues. They started really connecting and understanding the reasons why those people and in this part of the world there were a different longevity. And so thanks to Ansel and Margaret Keys, for the first time in 1975, someone named this way of living, this way of eating, this way of interacting with the environment, and this way of sharing food, Mediterranean diet eating in the Mediterranean way. Of course, now we have been talking a lot in this decade about all the beneficial aspects of Mediterranean diet from the nutritional perspective. And also in my work, uh, that I'm always focused on uh, working with scientists, innovators, startuppers, technologies. I always have been focused just on the scientific aspects, on the data side. But I never consider actually which are all the other benefits of Mediterranean diet and all the values of Mediterranean diet. And last but not least, of course, I want to highlight this uh, need of finding the balance. And I want to go back to the philosopher, to the Greek philosopher that were talking about the balance between uh, the health of the people and the health of the planet. And this is what we need now. We need to change our lifestyle, implementing sustainable lifestyle. Sustainable lifestyle also, of course, means sustainable food choices that are good for humans and good for the planet, like the Mediterranean diet is. And here you can find in those graphics some little snapshot because the same pyramid that you have been seeing in the previous slide is showing which is the real impact when we talk about the environmental impact of Mediterranean diet. What is the impact in terms of water consumption, which is the ecological footprint, which is the carbon footprint. And so you can clearly see that what is suggested to eat for our health is perfectly in balance with what is suggested to eat to keep in harmony in the environment. Last but not least, one of the values that I think are is the most precious one when we talk about Mediterranean diet is highlighting diversities. Highlighting diversities because this is not something that belongs from just one city or just one chef. This is something that is part of an entire area of the world. It's like a community facing 
one unique big lake. We are all connected and united, highlighting all of our diversity. And the cross-pollinations of culture, of seeds, of rituals that we have been seeing sharing during this 2000 years, of course, have been creating one of the richest way of living, one of the richest environment, one of the most thriving society. If you think about uh, the, the richness of biodiversity that you see there, and also the richness uh, of use and way of uh, creating and give space to creativity in how we share food. So the Mediterranean diet is not just something that belongs from Cilento and Pollica, but it is an experience that we share together with six other communities facing the Mediterranean, facing the Mediterranean Sea. Morocco, Croatia, Portugal, Spain, Cyprus, Greece, and also all the other countries around that have been benefiting from all of that. Last but not least, I have been talking about uh, the training experiences that we are co-organizing with FAO. This is an amazing experience and we strongly believe that to implement the 2030 agenda and to implement this sustainable business, this sustainable lifestyle models, we need also to invest in education, in education and schools, mm -hmm. but also educating youth, educating new young leaders. And this is the reason why we are hosting those boot camps. Actually, we also host a boot camp in Tokyo, focus on the balance between climate smart cities and climate smart farms, but also talking about sustainable and regenerative kitchen because we see many connections with the Japanese culture. But I want to invite you here to join us in Pollica in September, as Major Pisani says, because if you really want to experience what Mediterranean diet is, it's important to experience it and be there with your mind, with your body, with your soul. So this is for sure something uh, that we would love to share, inviting you all, inviting this audience to join our bootcamp in Polica in September. I'm stop stopping sharing my screen and I want to go back and invite now on this virtual stage with me, Professor Kimura, we are very glad to have you with us today. And uh, I would love really to start to share which are all of those uh, magical ingredients. Uh, and also, if we can, to connect a little bit our traditions with the Japanese tradition, because I see that there are tons of uh, connection between other, these two cultures. Thank you very much, Sarah. And can I share my slides to start my talk? Absolutely, yes. Can you see it? Yes, it's perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much again, Sarah, and good evening to your audience in Japan, and good morning to you in Italy. I'm very honored to be able to speak to you today and appreciate food, the Future Food Institute and Italian Embassy, embassy to giving me such an opportunity to talk with you. And I also thank to Ambassador Starace for giving me the generous comments on my work. My specialty is marketing. And from 2012 and 14, I took sabbatical leave from Jose University and worked as a visiting professor at Ca' Foscari, Venezia. I researched Italian and agricultural products and processed products such as wine and cheese, and I began to study the system of PDO and PGI. After I returned to Japan, it was by chance that the GI system was established. I am currently involved in the examination of Japan's GI registration for a, uh, the expert of Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. While I'm in Italy, it was rare for uh, Asians to investigate DOP EGP, and I was often featured to local television and newspapers and interviews. Today, I would like to propose a new understanding of the Mediterranean diet and its values. 
What are the values of the Mediterranean diet? Can you explain what the Mediterranean diet is? These are the several books about Mediterranean diet in Japan. Please look closely at the titles. The titles of the books are Mediterranean style diet, the Mediterranean style for eating and reducing weight, and the Mediterranean swimming method. The origin of the term diet comes from the Greek dieta, which means way of life. However, many Japanese think the Mediterranean diet is for losing weight. The reason is that the term diet means slimming and weight reduction in Japanese. This is all the language matter. The Japanese should understand that the Mediterranean diet is not a diet for weight loss. Another emphasis in Japan is on nutrition facts. If you search for Mediterranean diet on Google Scholar for academic papers, you will find evidence of its positive effects on asthma, obesity, heart disease, and metabolic syndrome. These essential effects on physical and mental health are only for a portion and do not complete capture the entire value of the Mediterranean diet. My focus today is not on the Mediterranean diet itself, but on the values people receive from it. What should children be taught about the Mediterranean diet? I will explain commonalities of the Mediterranean diet and washoku, and social relationships and sustainable ter territorial development. Let's look at the Mediterranean diet and Japanese cuisine washoku to understand their common values. The definition of the Mediterranean diet as an intangible cultural heritage was registered in Italy, Spain, Greece, and Morocco by UNESCO 2010. And those characteristics are already mentioned by Tara and uh, the, the mayor of the or, or Polonica, excuse me. So what about washoku? Japanese food has also been registered as an intangible cultural heritage. Let's look at the reasons for registration. Washoku was not registered for a specific dish such as tsukiyaki, tempura, sushi. But it was uh, registered for the Japanese food culture and that it has been passed down from generation to generation and has strengthened regional ties. Five features for Japanese food are very similar to those of Mediterranean diet. So I think the many Japanese understand the values of the Mediterranean diet uh, comparing to that to Japanese washoku. Olive oil is probably one of the representatives of the Mediterranean diet. How much olive oil do Italians and Japanese consume? Italians consume one kilogram of the olive oil a month. Annual consumption was so 400 tons in Japan and 540,000 tons in Italy, which was 135 times higher. In 2013, Italy was 600,000 tons. Japan was 55,000 tons. Although Japan increased more than 10 times, Italy was 11.7 times more than Japan. The annual per capita is 12, 12 kilograms for Italians and only 270 grams for Japanese. Generally speaking, values of olive oil include functional value and symbolic value. Functional values include nutrition and umami. Olive oil is used as a condiment in Italy. As a symbolic value, olive oil appears in ancient Roman mythology and was also used in religious ceremonies. But here, I would like to reconsider the value of olive oil in the Mediterranean diet. Specifically, two points to be noted are social relations and territorial. I conducted a survey while living in Japan, and living in Italy, excuse me, which plays an important role in socialization with other people. Olive oil builds social relationships in the dietary practices of Italian consumers. Have you ever heard the term convivio? 
It literally means banquets or feasts. Con means together, and vivo comes from vivere, which means not only eating together, but living together. Food is not just something to eat or source of nutrition, but involves social relationships. It is closely related to cultural aspects. The Italians talk about food, but we find that they are talking about social relationships and their culture. Social contexts embedded in food include bar, aperitivo, passeggiata, and mercato. Let's examine mercato here. Mercato has a wide variety of products from foods to daily necessities. When you go there, you can stop efficient, shop efficiently at once time. We call it the function of one-stop shopping. Another role is that mercato is a place where you can meet friends, report on the latest situations and build social relationships. Food also plays a role of maintaining social relationships. I had a close friend in Venezia where I lived. She has a mother in Montecatini Terme, Toscana, whose practice, who's practice functions as a safety net. My friend rings bakery in Montecatini Terme and orders bread for her mother. The baker not only delivers bread, but also reports to my friend of the health of her mother. When you observe discussions of origin, where food is cultivated, processed, and delivered, you can understand that food acts towards building social relationships. Late autumn, around now, it is a time of the season of harvesting olives. When I visited my friend in Montecatini Terme, she poured olive oil into a bottle and told me that she used to buy olive oil from for one year until the next harvest season from a acquaintance from Siena, where her mother is from. On the left, uh, right side of the photo, you see my former student who was from Reggio Emilia in Emilia Romagna region and her mother, and who uses olive oil that her divorced husband bought to from an acquaintance. It is not the olive oil. Italians talk about social relations through activities related to foods. While eating, they talk about the food and wine they are eating and how to produce, process, and cook it. Not only while at the table, there are many opportunities that foods are discussed. Even when they are not eating, they talk about the people behind the food and the social relationships rather than the food itself. Italian dietary practices are spoken and discussed regardless with or without foods. They mention, confirm, interpret, and reorganize social relationships and being specific in details. Italian often meet acquaintance by chance in comune while they are shopping at mercato or passeggiata, taking a walk. They talk and catch up on things. The chance people are like a family and help one another when problems arise. Next, I'd like to talk about concept Territorio. Territorio, which was associated with the social relationship of Italian consumers in their dietary practices. They are fond of foods in their origin, territorio. That affection is probably expressed as campanismo. I don't have enough time to argue this today, but I leave this one analogy toward the Japanese audience. Territorio is quite independent and similar to Han from Edo era. Because of the influence of the EU's common agriculture policy or CAP, Italy has become more and more regionalism oriented. Italians protect the unique and regional processed agricultural products. They prefer what they have been accustomed from their childhood. These are interesting examples of uh, regionalism. Local cuisine is different even in the short distances. And at the same time, even if they are the same dish, they have the different names. For example, gnocco fritto is modern. In Modena, it's called torta fritta in Parma. Under such circumstances, there are three people who are dedicated to pr protecting very inefficient agriculture. Franz Manza, for example, which brings animals to the top of the mountain at the altitude of 1,200 meters during the summer in Italy. On the slides, 
you will be the, from the Maruga, where the milk processing and cheese processing are conducted, and on the top of the mountain, overlooking the bottom of the valley, which was the main village. In the fall, autumn, the animals are brought down to the main village and kept in the barn and fed dry materials. Holstein are the cows that have been bred and produce milk very efficiently. And this variety is called Frizona in Italian. The cows raised in the Dolomite in Veneto region do not produce much milk and are not efficient. They are native variety called Pezzata Rossa. During the summer, animals eat herbs and wildflowers. A dairy farmer named Casanova in the photo said that making cheese in May is very difficult. In May, the meadows are full of flowers. And the milk of cows that eat them is not stable in quality. In the Dolomite area, pidio cheese, uh, the, you will see the Puzzone di Moena, Trentin Grana, and Montaggio. And this young dairy farmer was trying to add value, Montaggio to PDO, made in the mountains, and was trying to apply for the registration of PDO Montagna to the EU. However, with regard to agricultural activities and dairy farming, in those so-called least favored areas or disadvantaged areas without the, the subsidies of the common agricultural policy cap by EU, cannot independently continue the business. So management is not possible. So why does EU protect such inefficient agriculture? Inefficient farming activities may be little economic value, but locals and tourists seek cheese and butter that preserve the beautiful landscape and can only be enjoyed during the summer. Visitors and visiting, the creating local tourism in territorio, the municipality distributes a map called Dolomite Cheese World, where tourists enjoy the unique nature and food culture in territorio. Not only cheese, but also the Mediterranean diet is closely related to DOP EGP products in the EU. Just quickly look at the PDOPJ, which are protected in Japan under the EU-Japan Economic Partnership Agreement, EPA. It is interesting to see that among all PDO-PJ products, 1,324 products, 75.8% are occupied with five countries among 27 countries. They are the Mediterranean countries, which are Italy, France, Spain, Portugal, and Greece. It indicates that the Mediterranean countries have unique and traditional agri-products and foods when compared to the other European countries. Differences in attitude toward food are reflected in dietary education activities for children. Food education in Japan emphasizes more on nutrition, and on the contrary, in Italy, children taught food with a connection to territorio. I'm taking the example of Parmigiano Reggiano. Parmigiano production area are only five communes, and climate and geography, the origin has little rain and big temperature differences in day and the season. History, the Benedictine monastery started production in the 13th century. Boccaccio in his Decameron described the way of eating Parmigiano, which was just similar to the present way. Culturally, the same production procedure has been maintained for over 800 years. In Casaro, cheesemaker uses Rumia thermometer. Human hands in the origin, both dairy farmer and cheese casaro, cheese maker, keenly work on the maintenance of tradition. Video Pija territory oriented products can be competitive advantage against industrialized and intensive agriculture products under market fundamentalism. These products could result in territorial development. I would like to give you one example. This is the olive oil in Toscana. In the 1980s, the Gian Olive Oil PDO producers already wanted to brand their olive oil and applied for registration for PDO in Italy, 1990s. The Gian Olive Oil PDO was adapted in Tuscany for the subsidy for an integrated supply chain project of agriculture and food, and currently has subsidy of about 560 million yen. In response, they started a project called Amiata Oleos. 
There is a bottom-up project in which olive farmers and people who process olive oil have been working on, even before receiving the subsidy. For example, inspired by the idea of Professor Mancuso of the University of Florence in 2005, the journal producer started a project called Roots of Wisdom with the Institute of Rome. The project is to hang olive roots inside a water tank to Sterna that was used until water infrastructure was set up. The residents of the journal saw the roots of wisdom as very innovative, which led to the establishment of the Olive Oil Museum. They have not built any new facilities for the Olive Oil Museum, but use the existing resources on old Gran Toyo, the olive mill. Other existing resources have been repaired and people can wander around like the venue of the expo. It is called Diffuse Museum, Museo Diffuso. For example, the summer workshop, worship place where the uh, fresco of 1490 are preserved from Russo Wisdom Square, you can look down its view. The journal leaves have been cultivated since the ninth century and have been cultivated almost untouched. And the landscape from the village is called the Golden Basin creating a landscape so unique to the channel. When I visited there, I was invited to the second floor of Frantoyo, Olive Mill by Cooperativo, where I saw a machine squeezing olive oil from olives. We had a tasting of a local cuisine, which we can call enogastronomia, that contributes to the rural development, using it as tourism resources. The term enogastronomia comes from Greek, Inos, wine, and gastronomy, gourmet. I'd like to conclude my talk with some of the sentences. The Mediterranean diet is not only nutritious, but also has connection with people. And by consuming it, people strengthen social relationships. Deliciousness goes beyond personal and subjective matter. And it is related to the whole society of territorio. Mediterranean cuisine contributes to territorial development where a unique history and tradition are maintained. Lastly, let me raise an implication towards the Japanese market. Instead of looking at meals as nutrients or fuel to the body, we can entertain ourselves with social relationships built through foods. It enriches the Mediterranean diet or by understanding the territory behind ingredients and dishes. You are to enjoy the culture sustainably within five components of territory, which are origin, geography, history, culture, and human hands. This is all for my talk, and thank you very much for your listening. Professor Kimura, thank you so much. Thank you so much because uh, you. you've been talking also about my land because I come from Bologna. Ah, really? That is, of course, oh, in the yeah. Parmigiano Reggiano area. But also, actually, you have been uh, representing uh, a lot the Italian food identity. So thank you so much because uh, I really enjoyed the history that you made connecting the dots from transumanza and the usage. Uh, of our, of course, uh, more uh, ancient traditions. All our territorios, because you mentioned many different regions of Italy. And I think that highlighting those regions, uh, we are also highlighting uh, the big diversity that you find yes, uh, exactly. in regions like Italy. Mm -hmm. So not always... Yeah. yeah, I have to say that oh, if someone has the chance to travel also around Japan, you can find how big is the diversity of food, how big is the diversity of ingredients. Uh, because, of course, tourists maybe just think that Japanese food is sushi. But when you <laughs> start to open up uh, the, 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 big, uh, the, the big variety of foods that you can find in the different Japanese region, uh, you discover an incredible source uh, of, uh, of traditions, rituals, ingredients and so on. So it's been really enlightening to hear your, your representation. And I have to say, also with Major Pisani, I think you should come and visit us. I think you should join <laughs> our program and start and to, to come and visit us and visit Polica. 
we really would would love to to have you with us uh, at at our boot camp uh, in in September. So I I want to ask you just one thing before we leave. Uh, um, which are do you think the values, the commonalities that you find familiar, and that you find both in the Italian culture and in the Japanese food culture? Thank you, Sarah. I, I think that that question, the answer for your question is already uh, mentioned by you, that uh, you were saying the diversity of the both Mediterranean diet and Washoku, Japanese food. And this is not only the variety of nature, not only the biodiversity, but the identity of local people is different. And that is the, the good motivation for them to work, uh, maintain all those inefficient agriculture. So the most of the policy in Japan, uh, different from probably different from the EU cap, uh, that the rural development policy yeah. in European Europe, uh, the well, the government probably in, in emphasizes the efficiency is important. Efficiency. So the yeah. we call in Japanese smart agriculture. Yeah. So using the uh, the artificial intelligence and the drone or all those techniques. Technologies, yeah, uh, we also call it smart agriculture. Oh, you do? Oh, okay, yeah. I thought that it's a Japanese English, just like diet no, no, in Japanese. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Good, so that, uh, so th this is uh, in one side very important, but yeah. see that Italy and Japan have the very, uh, the so many mountains we have. It's yeah. not so many plain. So we can't be that efficient in agriculture compared to the United States or probably France. What our, uh, the competitive advantage would be the inefficient traditional maintain that attracts the tourists and the, the people from overseas. So I really uh, respect Italy and the Italian policy and the Italian the farmers to maintain all those the traditions and cultures and having the proud of the territorio. Yes, but I also, I don't know, I also think, and, and this, this journey that we are doing around the world is, is really enriching for us because we started to talk about Mediterranean diet involving many different Italian embassies around the world, talking with the professors like you or Ministry of Culture in different countries. And so I'm really starting to connect the dots with Mediterranean diet and many different other countries. And what I see is that Mediterranean diet yes needs to be preserved as we we think we need to preserve all the ancient tradition uh, in japan but if we want the mediterranean diet as well as yoshiko and all the japanese tradition in in the next centuries ahead we need to be able to innovate within the tradition because the only way to keep them alive is to find a way to basically continuously feeding them to make them say updated updated to talk with the language of youth the language of the young generations so then they can take it from now to the future so i always try, try to study the connection between innovation the future thinking and technologies and our tradition and i think that we our organization, people like you inside academics uh, and also policymakers, communities, municipalities, needs to be the one creating a, a flourishing and a thriving ecosystem that can help young generation to apply technology to our old tradition, to make sure that we're going to keep going, growing uh, and taking uh, olives from the trees, uh, but also that olive oil maybe is going to be uh, say accessible for all and also let's say people in different parts of the world can have access to this knowledge to this 
transformation or we find across those traditions future. Hi, Sarah. So I, I don't know I, if Major yeah. Pisani want to say something. Yeah. yeah, please, please, Professor Kimura. Uh, sorry, Mr. Pisani, I, I go first. And uh, I, I fully agree, uh, Sarah, that uh, the uh, this is very important to, I, I think the, the, the thing, important thing is open innovation or open networking. So enclosure or in a certain territorial isn't uh, creating any innovation. But when you, you, you see outside the world and having the communication and networking with fully different from the fully different countries or fully different uh, sectors, industrial sectors, you would have more knowledge and ideas and to be able to make the, the innovation possible. Yes. Thank you, Professor Kimura. Sarah, I totally agree with you. The innovation is the, the, the right way for the future of the uh, agriculture, but not only for the planet, for the Mediterranean diet. Uh, if we want to preserve uh, and uh, if we want to, to use in the right way the, the Mediterranean diet is necessary to create uh, the right background of the innovation to, for agriculture and food in general. Because uh, if we produce uh, in the right way, we have uh, uh, a low impact on the, on the environment. We have uh, a, uh, a good impact on the on the health of people and uh, uh, we can also uh, use the innovation to have um, to, uh, to have a good presence on the on the territory by the people uh, uh, normally now uh, the small village in italy uh, lost people many people go to big uh, big city but not only in italy all around the world many people uh, uh, want to to stay in the in the big city, and uh, this is uh, uh, this is a problem because uh, when you live by the small city, uh, you lost uh, a part of culture, a part of tradition, and uh, a part of value. Uh, and um, in Mediterranean diet, uh, all the culture and tradition. I repeat, repeat the same thing, that the uh, the uh, this this concept because uh, is uh, essential for us. And uh, if you if you live by the sea by the small city, you lost resources. And uh, the innovation is uh, a solution. Probably is the, uh, the, the 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 right solution for the problem. Uh, and uh, if you uh, put together innovation, tradition, and culture, we have uh, we create a new value. Not uh, not not only totally maintain the, the value. We create uh, uh, more value than uh, than in the past, and uh, so it's very important uh, um, uh, that people as you work uh, on this uh, on this uh, on this theme on this field and create a, a big opportunity as a future food institute uh, that they want to discover the, the way for the future. Yes, but also we need professor like Professor Kimura to spread this knowledge. Because if we lose the opportunity to spread all of those information, I was enjoying it. I'm Italian, those things are part of my identity. But she reminded me things that we I already knew, but probably I haven't thought about them in the, in the last years. So thank you so much, because what you were saying was something that I would love to say to Italians, to people that are living here close to my house, not only to the Japanese community. So really, Thank you for the work you're doing. And I'm really proud to hear things like talking about the rituals of our eating ways, uh, like uh, the aperitivo time, uh, the talking about the values of the territories, talking, talking about the values of our products uh, and the origins of the products, uh, talking about all the different traditions on how we were preserving food. So I think it's uh, really important to have... Uh, scientists and uh, professors uh, keep going studying uh, which are our origins uh, because this is the only way to create value 
out of the incredible millennial experiences that our societies already did in the past. So I, I'm really grateful for the work you are doing. And also I think I can tell that also uh, from, from Stefano as well, we really would love to host you in Polica because you have been experiencing Venice, but I think you must absolutely experience the real Mediterranean life uh, in Polica. Yeah. So yeah, we love you are welcome in Polica. When you want, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, go uh, come in Polica. It's a place. Yeah, of... I would love to. I've been to. You are in Campania, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, I, I've been there. Uh, in the... the south of Campania yes. region, in the oh. national park of Cilento, good, you can good. find Polica and other beautiful place mm -hmm. as. Uh, archaeological site as a uh, velia or a pestum uh, so you can discover the the real the real taste of mediterranean diet and the real culture of mediterranean diet so when you want you can come it's really living in a documentary so it's really a learning experience everything you yeah, do is a learning experience <laughs> yeah only place that i researched in campania was the mozart bufara campania production area so <laughs> I have to visit you next time. Exactly. So I want to really thank you so much for your work. I want to thank, of course, the Italian Embassy in Tokyo for organizing with us this uh, event. I want to thank, of course, Ambassador Starace that is always supportive of all our initiatives in Japan. We are going to officially open our Future Food Living Lab in Kiyobashi in 10 days. And Ambassador Starace is going to be with us. So we're very happy to be an important Italian hotspot in, in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And of course, I thank the Major of Polica for being such an amazing companion in this journey around the world. We're actually, we really would love to highlight the Mediterranean lifestyle as one of the best way to achieve the sustainable development goals and the Agenda 2030 of the United Nations. So thank you so much. Thank you to, your, to our audience. And we hope to see you soon in person. Thank you. Thank you very Ciao. much. Thank you very uh, much. Yes, Ciao. Yes, bye have bye. a good day.